Greetings. I'm hoping that you will join me in an adventure exploring vernacular architecture in Northern California. The class six sessions, each will be de devoted to one kind of housing. We'll look at some small commercial structures as well, but we're going to start with the Spanish and Mexican colonization, looking at buildings built of mud blocks. And I have put together quite a wonderful array of archival photographs showing what these homes looked like and their inhabitants and how they lived within them. So we'll look both at the Spanish period and at the Mexican period, ending in 1848, Americans brought wood frame building skills with them and they came to a forested place. So when we look at the second session, we're going to look really at log cabins, gold rush shacks, and then the prefabricated houses that came from all over the world to meet the exploding population caused by gold fever. So look here on the left and you see the makeshift dwelling the gold digger found himself and mostly hymns and one said, we live more like brutes than like humans. Our third session tells us how the newcomers brought wood working skills with them to the forested place and were able to develop quite sophisticated building construction techniques so that they could build modest cabins for the workers who came to support the industrial might of Northern California. So we see here the gold rush shacks, just simple redwood cabins. And we see on the right, I love this image that I found at the library because it's from the 1960s and it juxtaposes a cottage, a very traditional cottage other than having been raised to accommodate an automobile next to a modest dwelling of the 60s. Again, built of redwood, but evoking the modernist rather than the early industrial style. Then bungalows. One thing I read that amused me was that one factor in the bungalows wide acceptance had to do with the lyrical nature of the word itself, bungalow. And what I learned that they're not all from Asia in origin, but the Middle East as well. And Lycia, an empire BC with wealth developed quite a unique and very appealing building form. And you see here the reconstruction of a Lycian dwelling juxtaposed to a house in Oakland that you can walk, drive by. And in fact, I learned of it from one of the bungalow books. And since that house was published, the owners have obviously decided that they will not entertain walkers by and have planted lush foliage. Then the California ranch house. Ranch houses enchanted the nation. And it has to do with the romance 
of California. It has to do with the casual outdoor focused lifestyle promised by living in a ranch house. We will end with modernism and I say post-World War II, but if I work along on my class preparation, I see that in terms of modernism, we really have to start much earlier with population growth and the idea of multifamily dwellings so that most of our focus will be on the post-World War II period. Here, you see Worcester, Bernardi, and Emmons Westlake development in San Mateo with Halperin as the landscape architect. And we also see Roger Lee, Berkeley grad, spent the early years of his career doing wonderful modernist and modest detached homes, as well as multifamily dwellings. This one, the Cedar Walnut Complex is on Shattuck. So I am hoping that you'll join me. I've so much enjoyed putting together the lectures for this class and finding the wonderfully evocative images. So hope to see you. Thank you.